Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day today. Welcome back to the guitar uh, rig challenge. Uh, if you're new to this channel or new to this series that I'm doing, uh, the basic premise is <clears throat> I started with $50 and I'm going to uh, work my way up to a, a pro level type of uh, guitar rig um, through trading, through selling, um, and you know trying to get the best deals possible where I can. So uh, in episode three, I left off with the Laney Lionheart combo. Uh, sorry, it's a head in a cab. Um, so I had just gotten that uh, from a trade, and I was still left with at this point fifty five dollars because I had made some money in a previous previous deal. Um, so I listed the Laney Lionheart up for trade. I think I originally listed it for $1,400. Uh, by the time I was done, I, I'd, I'd taken that down to about, I think, $1,100. Um, and um, the offer that I ended up taking on that one was, uh, it was for two amps, which is an important part of this process, and I'll explain why. So um, the, the deal ended up consisting of a Marshall Class 5 combo in black, and then an orange rocker 30 uh, in classic orange. Um, important point to note for both of these. So Marshall, some of their earlier series of class five amps um, were made in the UK and then they eventually shipped over to Mark, started making stuff in China. This is one of the earlier versions that they made in UK, which is a little bit more desirable. And then the orange rocker uh, 30, Orange had done a similar thing. So they, they're they also based in the UK. And they uh, made their Rocker series out of the UK. And then they later came out with like a, a Rocker 212. Um, which was made uh, which was made in China. So both of these amps were made in the UK. Which increases value a little bit. So I met that guy nearby. Did the trade. And the important part here is that I was taking one amp which was a little bit more of a high higher value and i was i was splitting those assets into two pieces so um i had uh the marshall class five which you know used value is about 400 to 425 450 uh and then the orange rocker um was about 900 to a thousand so i was still increasing in value at this point <clears throat> and i could take those smaller chunks and um, you know put them up for for trade and try to get some some value there. So uh, the Marshall Class Five, it was in great condition. It needed a new power tube. Um, the other one was functioning, but it was a little crackly. I made that clear uh, when I when I was talking with the person that I uh, ended up trading with, um, and I I I think I got the offer that I took on that one within two hours of listening it so i got one offer on it loved it took that down um and then did that trade so uh if you have seen my other video um or the diy guitar build series that i just started um i alluded to the fact that i had owned a fender roadhouse strap before and really loved the neck profile and that's what this is so that's this is the time that i own that so uh, I traded for a Fender Deluxe Roadhouse Strat. These are about a thousand dollars new. Um, in my opinion, these are some of the best Strats that are coming out of Mexico right now. So it's got uh, noiseless pickups. It's got uh, locking tuners. It's got um, some active uh, preamp electronics. It's got, I think, the S1 switching system. Just really high quality, good stuff. So I was really happy about that trade. I think I definitely increased in value there from, you know, the Marshall Class 5, um, like I said, about 400 to 425 in used value. Um, I don't remember where I, what I ended up estimating the Roadhouse Strat at. It was probably about 800. 
Uh, it was in like new condition, really good condition. <clears throat> and then the Orange Rocker 30 was a little bit of a longer uh, trade series. I got a lot of offers on this one. Um, and I had it up, for, I had it listed for a while because, um, you know, I knew I wanted to get a really nice item out of this one. And I did some things in this trade series that I probably should not have done. Um, so once I get to that, I'll, I'll, I'll explain what I mean. Um, one person, uh, messaged me and asked if the amp had an effects loop. Uh, it did not. That was the end of that, that one there. Uh, one person, uh, offered me a warmth strap. Uh, it had a, it had a lot of nice parts. I typically stay away from what I call parts casters, um, which are basically guitars built from parts, which is something I, I do myself. But uh, the reason I stay away from them is because they're a little, they're harder to move in a used market. When someone is building a parts caster, they're usually picking very specific parts that, um, you know, that are not readily available. So it's not gonna be, you know, someone's not gonna build a parts caster that is something they could very easily go and buy you know, same color, same pickups, same neck, all that kind of stuff. It's not something they could readily go by. That's why they're building it. Um, and that appeals to some people, but not not a broader market. So that's why I stay away from those. Uh, but, um, you know, it was a cool looking guitar. Uh, just, you know, I didn't think the used value was there. Then someone offered me an Ignator Tweaker 88. This is the larger uh, amp that uh, Ignator makes. It had a broken knob, um, and, I, you know, things like that. I don't really do amp repairs, um, and I also didn't want to spend the money because I didn't have it at this point. I only had $55, as I mentioned. I didn't want to spend to have that um, repaired. So I, uh, he was also offering a 4x12 cabinet with it, uh, but I said, you know, thanks, no thanks. I was a little bit pickier with this one. And then... Uh, the next offer I got was another orange amp, so kind of orange for orange here. Uh, it was the OR15, and then it had a, the matching 2x12 um, cab, which I think is, is their, they call it the PPC something. Uh, I did not do this trade for a couple of reasons. The first one is that the OR series, while they are very nice sounding amps, um, they're made in China, so the use value is lower. Um, and it also... You know, I, I I didn't really see the point in cha in trading an orange for an orange when the value was, you know, still on my side. I wasn't going to ask this guy for money, so I just said thanks, but no thanks. Then I got a really high-end uh, trade offer, which was an Ernie Ball Music Man Axis Super Sport HH. Uh, the value would have definitely been on my side, but he wanted cash which I didn't have. So I said, that was awesome. Uh, really cool looking guitar, but can't do it. Um, the next offer I got was a PV6505 plus 1x12, that's a combo, plus a Tradition Strat. Um, for some reason or another, and this is going to seem silly when you find out later what I trade, traded for, the PV combo amps aren't just do not hold value. Uh, I don't know why. Um, if you look at the PV5150 or the 6505 heads, they still uh, hold a lot of value, but for some reason, when you go to that combo, I feel like you could buy those things all day for 400 bucks, um, and it just, it just wasn't there. So he, he also offered to throw in that Tradition Strat. If you're unfamiliar with Tradition, it's a uh, it's a lower end brand. Um, I've never, I think I have owned one actually, not a strap, but uh, a Les Paul at some point. It seemed okay. I wasn't that impressed. Um, but that was just kind of, you know, window dressing uh, onto the offer. Uh, I didn't want to fool with that. So I said, no thanks. Uh, and then the next one, it was an EC1000 Koa Deluxe. Um, and this is where I did something that I don't typically do. Um, I kind of went with my personal opinion, uh, which was, I didn't really like the look of this guitar. It's not my style. 
And when you're doing trades, specifically for the point of trading up, you have to throw personal preference out the window. Um, and I didn't. I just I just went with it. So, um, you know, when you start putting your emotions into trades like this, and this is a piece of advice I'll give you with this video, when you start putting your emotions into it, um, value kind of takes a back seat. So I have done deals where I know I'm getting the lesser end because I just like the way something looks. Uh, you know, it's got a feature that I think is really cool or it's a nice color on the guitar or whatever. And I take a, I take a lower end deal, but like, I'm not, I'm not getting fleeced on any of this stuff. Um, you know, there's a, everyone has their own limits, but you can't let emotion get into it, especially when you're trying to trade up because the first thing I thought was, I don't know, I would never play that guitar, but it doesn't matter because I was going to trade it anyway, but I told him no and moved on. So then we landed on the trade offer that I eventually took. And I mentioned earlier that PV combo amps don't really hold value that well. Well, someone offered me an EVH 5153 in ivory white. Um, it was the 6L6 model, 2x12. And I want to say these things go for about 1500 uh, I'll post a picture so you'll know uh, about 1500 new and they hold they hold their value fairly well um, so at this point in the trade series I've done something which is gonna which really shapes the end result which is I ended up trading an amp for a guitar so now I have a guitar and I traded an amp for a more valuable amp so now I've got um, what I consider two really nice trading pieces which are going to set the stage. Um, I did increase in value, um, probably about $400 on the Marshall. Um, and then the orange rocker, not as much, uh, probably about $300 in used value, uh, on those. Um, but I think I ended up in a really good spot. And, uh, from here things get, uh, even more interesting. So if you haven't, if you have not subscribed yet, please do. Uh, we'll continue this series. I'm going to try to get them out at a faster pace, um, and we'll see where things go from here. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.